Hey guys, Kaylin here, and this is page 8 of chapter 14, and here is another commentary. Alright, so this page took me about 3 hours, but it is sped up to about 20 times, so it's much quicker than what it actually was. I don't know if this happens to other fellow artists or what or whatnot, but there's some days where my style differs from another day. The only way I can describe it is basically my characters look younger than they are. I just draw their features too large for their head. So you'll see that I, uh, I will shrink them down every now and then in my pages. But yes, um, so from the past page where it was this really quiet moment and uh, I don't use any words, I go to this page that has a lot of text on it. So I kind of wanted to lighten up the mood a little bit, kind of joke around. So this one's pretty text heavy. Now I had somebody ask if I were to do this project over again, if I were to restart Plume, what would I change? That is a really good question. Um, there's not much I would change. I might make it a little more westerny. I chose the western setting uh, simply because it intrigued me. This particular plot could be plopped down into any genre, really. So it could be plopped down into modern day if I really wanted to. But I just love the western and the feel of it and it allowed me to play with the colors and you know the sepia tone and, and the outfits and guns and the and the action scenes. I guess I, I don't know what I would change. I would not change the genre. I don't think I would do that. Even though every time I have to draw a horse or a cowboy hat, it is a huge struggle for me. I don't know why I chose to torture myself like that, but I did. I guess I would make the style a little, little more gritty if I were to do this all over again. You know, I do go back on pages and see like there are just everyone's their worst critic and uh, I see a lot of errors in the past pages that I just really want to go back and change which I may do for the omnibus like I wouldn't change my style completely I would just try to make it a little less cutesy and that's what I'm aiming for for my next project is um, you know a little less Disney-esque but again that's my style and I may not be able to work out of that like riding a bike, you just don't even think about it at this point. And I had a couple questions about Vesper and Korok's relationship. And uh, this one I, I hesitate to really talk about because I don't want to give away anything or, or imply something that I don't intend to pursue or that I will pursue. I just don't want to give away anything. Gosh, that is so cryptic, isn't it? Um, basically, I love the slow burn of the stories. I like characters that have to work together and they go through things together and that's when the love starts to build. And you know, clearly Vesper and Korok love each other. It, it just, is it romantic love? We don't know yet. You know, as far as the pages have told us, we don't know if they're romantically in love. Will that happen? I, I, I'm not going to say. You know, I really like the interaction between the two characters, and, you know, I, I won't deny it, they do love each other. And things will progress, but in what direction? <laughs> so sorry for the cryptic answer to that question. So yeah. There are a lot of panels on this page, but um, because it's digital art and the beauty of the tools allowed, I got to copy and paste some of the frames and that made it really quick. I hope this commentary was good. I hope I answered questions and I know it was a cryptic answer for some of it, but uh, I don't want to give anything away. No spoilers, come on. And there you have it. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bye-bye.